May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we celebrate today a great feast of a Spanish 16th century mystic and doctor, the great Saint Teresa of Avila, this powerhouse and masterpiece of the prayer life, who gave, her, gave us many graces for the church, the grades, the nine grades of how to pray. She wrote this beautiful treatise called The Interior Castle, how we enter into ourselves to grow in holiness. She was also the great reformer of the Carmelites, as we know. She even made a vow to always do what was more perfect, leading to the grace to be pierced by the angel like Padre Pio, called transverberation. But we would like to speak in accordance with what we spoke about last week. God's providence has also allowed us again to speak about the reality of hell. Why? Because this great saint had a vision of hell. It is a grace to speak about this reality because it brings home the very real way and unspeakable horrors that unrepentant sin can lead us to. And we need to know about this reality. As an act of charity, we speak thus. We should have then this grace, knowing about this reality, to have a burning desire for pray that souls don't end up in hell. These visions have been given then about hell to various canonized saints and doctors of the church to tell us about the nature of hell. So this 16th century saint wrote in her autobiography a frightening vision she had of hell and how it haunted her for the rest of her life. While she was writing down the experience, the same bone chilling feeling, bone chilling feeling as she had the time took place. This is her own vision of hell, where she saw the place consigned, in fact, for herself, if she was to be damned. She was at prayer one day when suddenly, without knowing how, she found herself plunged right into the depths of the abyss. It was the Lord's will that she should see the place where the devils had prepared for her and which she had merited for her sins. The entrance, she said, resembled a very long, narrow passage like a furnace, very low, dark, and closely confined. The ground seemed to be full of water, which looked like filthy, evil-smelling mud. And in it were many wicked-looking reptiles. At the end of this, there was a hollow place scooped out of a wall, like a cupboard, she says. And it was here that she found herself in close confinement. But the sight of all this was pleasant by comparison to what she actually felt there within her own soul. She felt an indescribable fire within her soul. Her bodily sufferings were so intolerable that even though she had suffered many pains in this lifetime, these were nothing compared to the present pain, which was multiplied by the thought that they would be endless and never ceasing and for eternity. And even these are nothing by comparison, she said, with the agony of her soul, an oppression, a suffocation, an affliction so deeply felt and accompanied by such hopeless and distressing misery. It was as if she said her soul was continually being torn from her body. She could not find the words to describe that interior fire and that despair, which is the greatest and most grievous tortures and pains in this lifetime. She could not see the cause of them, but she felt as if she were being both burned and dismembered. In that horrendous spot carved off card out for herself, powerless to hope for comfort. She says it was impossible to sit or to lie. There was no room to do so. 
she had been put in this place, which looked like a hole in the wall, and those very walls, so terrible to the sight, bore down upon and completely stifled her. Although there was no light, it was possible to see everything, the sight of which can cause affliction in front of her. She realized then, very quickly, this was a great favor given to her by the Lord, the Lord's will that she should see her own place before her own eyes, the place in which his mercy, from which his mercy had delivered her. She was terrified then by all of this, and she never could recall any time when suffering, trials or pains, and when everything that we can suffer on earth had seemed of the slightest importance by comparison with this trial. This is the vision. This vision was one of the most signal favors which the Lord bestowed upon her, and she said thus, it has been the greatest benefit to me, both in taking me from all fear of the tribulations and disappointments of this life, and also in strengthening me to suffer them and to give thanks then to the Lord, who, as I now believe, has delivered me from such terrible and never-ending torments. We also know that this was the case. Remember, Our Lady took the three children of Fatima to hell, as with the three children of Fatima having saved in hell and for St. Teresa, everything for both of these seemed light in comparison with the single moment of such suffering that she had to bear in this vision. The vision too was the cause of a very deep distress with, whereby she experienced because of the number of great souls bringing themselves damnation each and every day, she continued. It also inspired me with fervent and imp impulses for the good of souls. I really believe that to deliver a single one of them from such dreadful tortures, I would be willing to die many deaths. To die many deaths. After all, if we see anyone on earth who is especially dear to us suffering in great trial or pain, our very na nature seems to move us to compassion. And if indeed the sufferings are intense and severe, they seem to even oppress us too. Who then could bear to look upon a soul's endless sufferings in this most terrible trial of all? No heart could possibly endure it without great affliction. For even earthly suffering, which after all, as we know, has a limit, and will end in with death, moves us to deep compassion. And that other suffering then has no limits. I do not know how we can look so calmly and see the devil carrying off so many souls as he does daily. These are the words of St. Teresa of Avila. Somebody recently shared a childlike story to me about this reality Sometimes we need to get back to basics and speak to each other, each other like children to realize these realities. Talking about the eternal damnation, this was a story given by the great Father Hugh Thwaites, a Jesuit in this country. He said, consider you are in a dense black forest and there is a ferocious beast lurking around, roaring like a lion for someone to devour, as we read in the Gospel 1, Peter 5. You managed to escape the wild beast through the grace of God. You exit the forest, the dense forest, and lo and behold, in front of your eyes, you see approaching two of your dearest and best friends, approaching to take this very same path into the depths of the same forest. Perhaps, you think you should be silent about the danger out of human respect, as in the world, because they might think you're crazy to speak about such things. But what then is the greatest charity, he says? In good conscience, you must warn your good friends. Do not enter into the forest and be devoured 
by the beast Satan. This is the charity today then to shout from the rooftops about the existence of hell and the devil in order to save souls from this very damnation. Saint Teresa then concludes by reflecting on her life in this vision of hell. She had in her lifetime serious illnesses and bore them with great patience, which the Lord bestowed upon her. She had not given, she said, herself into murmuring or speaking ill of anyone, nor wished anybody ill. She was not greedy and could not remember ever having been envious in such a way as to offend the Lord. She abstained from certain other faults and despicable though she was in her own eyes, lived in the most constant fear of the Lord. And yet look at the place where the devils had prepared a lodging for her. It is true she thought that my many faults have merited a heavier punishment, but nonetheless the torture in the vision was terrible. It is a perilous thing for a soul to indulge in its own pleasure or to be contented when at every step it is in danger of committing mortal sin like the drop of a hat. For the love of Jesus and Mary then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us free ourselves from all occasion of sin and wake up. Wake up to the thought that we could be languishing in the fires of hell with Satan body and soul for eternity. How many mortal sins send you to hell? One is the answer. The little visionaries of Fatima were also shown hell. The authenticity of that vision was underlined by the astounding miracle of the sun seen by tens of thousands of people, even so many miles away, and testify to this event by atheistic and cynical journalists who attended Fatima on that day, in fact, to scoff the children and to disprove the authenticity of the events unfolding there. We know that terrifying vision the children were taken to by a lady of the damned souls in hell, though lasting only a few seconds, according to Lucia, shaped the rest of their lives. They went to extraordinary lengths then to fast and to make sacrifices for the conversion of sinners, to save souls from such a petrifying, hopeless fate. What are we doing then now to stop the hemorrhaging of souls into hell? Reflect well then on this vision of St. Teresa of Avila today. Stay close to the lady, to the mother, the immaculate, our mother, and repeat many times each and every day, O oh my Jesus, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.